In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the free Google Classroom app on an iPad, an iPhone, an Android tablet, or an Android phone. Now, there is a separate video that's linked in the description showing you how you can use Google Classroom on a PC, Mac, or on a Chromebook. So, um, if you are using it on a tablet and you're not using a PC or a laptop or a Chromebook at all, then I would advise that you get some other apps to actually use with it as well. And so you'll need the free Google Classroom app, but you will also need Google Docs. So Google Docs is a bit like Word. It lets you do some, uh, it lets you do word processing and handing your work in that way. Um, you'll need the Google Slides app. It's possible that your teacher might ask you to do some work on Google Slides. So that's a bit like PowerPoint. You've also got Google Sheets. Now, it's probably not very likely that you're going to use this one, but there is a free Google Sheets app, which is a bit like Microsoft Excel. You will need the Google Drive app. So the Google Drive app is a bit like a file storage system that lets you collect and organize all your work. And you may need the Google Mail app. Now, the Google Mail app will obviously let you email your teacher and email other students in the class, but it depends whether the school has got email turned on. Another thing that you might have turned on is Google Meet. So Google Meet will let you video conference with your teacher, but it depends whether the school has got that turned on or not. So if we just have a look then, we've got these apps. So you might want to pause this video and then you can go and download the apps that you need. So you'll definitely need Google Classroom. The rest of them are optional, but I would definitely say Google Docs and Google Drive would be the next ones that I would recommend using. So I've opened the Google Classroom app on an iPad, and so I'm going to have to tap get started. And the first thing that I'll need to do is to sign in with my school Google account. Okay, I've signed in, so straight away it's asking me if it wants to send notifications. So if the teacher sends me uh, a new piece of work or a message, then I'll get notified. So I can decide whether to allow or not allow. So I probably recommend allow would be a good one on there. Um, you can always change that in settings and notifications later. I'm just going to say don't allow on this because it's just a test account. Right, so the one um, that I'm going to go into in a minute is this this G Suite for Education course one. This would be your teacher's um, class that you've joined. Now, if your teacher's already invited you, you might it might come up and say join and you just tap there to join. But you might have been sent a code. So if you need to join and use a code, um, if you tap the plus in the bottom right hand corner, then it will say join class. So if I say join class there, then it will ask me to enter the code that the teacher has already given me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this course that I've already joined. So if I tap on this one, so this is my class, you'll see down at the bottom that there are three areas. There's one called stream, one called classwork, and one called people. So this is the stream. So what this is, is a notice board where your teacher will give you notices. So the newest notice come up at the top here and then they move down as they go along. So with this, I don't actually have any work that I've got to do. There's no work attached. This is like a message board where the teachers give me messages. So you'll see that down here, I've got this separate one where it says, good morning class, I'd like to share this amazing video with you. If I tap on that, it will bring me through to this screen. Now, I haven't put the YouTube app on my iPad and I missed it off that list earlier because I'm assuming that you've already got the YouTube app on. But if I wanted to play that video, then I would have to actually add the YouTube app onto it. Um, so yeah, so this is, the, uh, this is the stream that we see here. The next area that I'd like to show you is the classwork area at the bottom of the screen here. So I'm just going to tap on it. And this loads up all the tasks that I've been asked to do. Now, the tasks normally, the newest one comes at the top, but what I've done is I've put these into different areas. 
So I've got circle time, history, computing, sample assignments. So your teacher might change that and they might put something like um, English, math, science and so on. Um, if I just want to see one of those areas, I've got this filter button up here. So if I tap on this button here, then I could just go down to one area. So let's have a look at sample assignments and let's go in and see what an assignment actually looks like. So I've got one down here that says write the diary entry and I'm going to click on it and go into it. So you'll see down here that it says open the monster's diary and read it. So this is where the instructions come that I have to do. So I've got this thing called the monster's diary. So I'm going to open that and read it. And then I've got a document I need to open to actually finish the piece of work off. So to start with, if I tap on that, it will open up the monster's diary and I can go through and I can read it. Now, instead of actually writing on the paper and finishing it off, we're going to hand that in digitally. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. OK, so I've read the monster's diary and now I need to do some typing. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, it says your work. Now, the first thing is it says add private comment. So if I want to send a message to my teacher that only my teacher can see, I tap on add a private comment and then I can type a private comment in there to send to my teacher and they can send me a private comment back. But what I want to do is hand the work in. So you'll see it says your work at the bottom. You'll also see it says handed in. So I've already been testing this. Um, so yours won't say handed in. So what I'm going to do is just tap down here or I can swipe up with this arrow. And then you'll see that I've got this work. It's a CPD 10, The Monster's Diary. So if I tap on that piece of work, you can see I've started to write my Monster's Diary. And I need to add some more to it. But I can't actually do any typing on here. It won't let me do any typing. So the reason why is I need to open this in Google Docs so that I can do my typing. And it's not very obvious, but over here in this corner, there's a little button. And if I tap on that button, then what it does is it opens Google Docs and it will open this document in Google Docs. And now I'm ready to do my typing. So um, I can't, I still can't type, but down at the bottom, Ah, <laughs> I still couldn't type, but if I double tap on the screen, I can. Um, and down at the bottom, you've also noticed that there's a pen. So if I tap on this pen, then I can start to write. First, I looked and I opened the window. After that, I... And then so on and so on. Oh, I've typed in the wrong place. Okay, so obviously I need to type in the right place. And then I can do my typing. It's important when you finish to tap this tick up at the top because that just saves your piece of work. So I've saved my piece of work there, but I'm still in Google Docs and I need to get back to Google Classroom. So if I'm on uh, an iPad or an iPhone, it, there's a handy link up here where I can just tap Classroom, the last app that I was in and it will take me back. So that's in it now, so I can tap close. So if I was on an Android tablet, then I would be able to just reopen Google Classroom and then finish off handing my work in. Now the great thing about Google Docs is it saves your work automatically. So even though I've closed that, as long as I tap that little tick at the top, it will save everything that I've done. So this would say, hand in so I can hand in my work and then that would be it that's how I hand in a piece of work like that to my teacher so if I just come back here not all assignments will look like that one of the great things about using Google Classroom on an iPad is that you could hand in a piece of work as a picture and of course that goes for any kind of phone or tablet because they've all got cameras so if I go to this one instead write the monster's diary take a picture of writing to send back if I go there and I open it this time so this is just the same but now what I want to do is I want to take a photo so if I've done a piece of work on pen and paper and I want to take a photo if I tap this arrow at the bottom you'll see it says add attachment so I can open this and add attachment and then I can use my camera to take a photo or I can upload a photo that I've already taken. So I can just take a piece of, uh, take a picture of my work and hand it in that way. 
Right, so if we come out of this assignment now, and I click this arrow at the top left to go back. So I'm back on my classwork page. So we've looked at the stream, we've looked at the classwork. So if we have a quick look at people, so on people, this will give me a list of teachers that are in my class and also all the other students that are in my class. Now, what's missing here is that sometimes you get an envelope here. Um, so you can send an email to the teacher, but this can be turned on or off. And so in this case, it's turned off and I can uh, have an envelope where I can email my other pupils so what that would happen what would happen in there is if I click the envelope if I've got Google Mail it would open the Google Mail app or uh, a mail program on your computer so that's a very quick guide to how to use Google Classroom on a mobile device